7 billion profiles, 400 billion events in real time with a 15% performance increase and a 20% cost reduction. That is the story of Lytics. And today I have with me Joshua, who is the president of Lytics. Joshua, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Let's go right into it. Tell us about Lytics. What do you guys do? Hey, Bruno, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I've actually been enjoying a lot of these data stories. So uh, we're happy to be here and talk a little bit about Lytics and really talk about our story with GCP overall. You know, uh, Lytics has been in the category of customer data platforms for a while. Actually, we're one of the first companies in this space. Um, I, I thought I would start maybe first with just a, a little bit of context around what the customer data platform space is, what they're all expected to do, and then talk a little bit about what's unique about us, and then really how we work with Google Cloud, because that makes us actually pretty unique in the space. So if if all of those listeners are kind of curious when they hear the word customer data platform kind of mashed together, what it actually means, there's a little bit of confusion around it. The best way to think about it is that if you hear customer data platform, you should be thinking about three things. Kind of One, if you hear customer data platform, it's all about collecting and organizing zero party and first party data. That's anonymized information about us and stuff that you and I are agreeing to give to a business, like our email address or our name. Every CDP needs to be able to collect that zero party and first party data. The second thing that they do is they organize that information into a profile so that they know who you are, Bruno, and they know who I am. That has to be stored inside of the business's infrastructure. And that's super critical, right? That's building kind of the data moat for the enterprise, the modern enterprise. And then the third piece that's critically important that every CDP that's worth its salt does is they take that data, that customer profile, they add insights into those customer profiles and they introduce them out into the business, federate that data out into the business. When Linux creates a profile, we actually call back into Vertex. We do a bunch of inferred enrichments on top of it. We use NLP, a bunch of other types of technology to add about 200 different inferred attributes on top of that profile. So we create this really rich profile because of our relationship with Google Cloud. And then all of those insights from those inferred attributes, they get shared around the enterprise. So we are in the CDP space, we're a data product, but we're pretty unique in that we're 100% built in GCP. We're fully integrated with Google Cloud, fully integrated with Google Ads, fully integrated with the Google marketing platform. We have a rich legacy with AI and ML, and in particular, Vertex. So if you're a customer and you're building a data product, Linux is a great example of how you could build a data product at scale. Now, of course, Google Cloud's introduced a lot of changes around price optimization, compressed storage, additions, auto scaling. So how are you taking advantage of these innovations and how should customers listen to us think about those innovations? Yeah, I mean, maybe the shorthand for everything that I just said is that we, Linux are the customer 360 company, right? We use the data to create you know, uh, this view of each of your customers so that you're able to do modeling on top of it and then ultimately activate that information. So when we saw the innovations that Google Cloud were bringing out with new pricing and optimization capabilities, our kind of initial experimentation led us down the path to really learn two really critical uh, takeaways. The first is that it is really important to understand that predictability is a big outcome of the innovations that Google Cloud has been bringing to market. So what I mean by that is that you know, our business in particular, the load that Linux places on our customers' big query has to be predictable. And historically, that's actually not been always the case, at least for us. So as an ISV, like it is unbelievably important for our business to be able to run and scale the way that we need to, especially in the verticals that we sell to, like CPG and media and entertainment and banking, that when BigQuery is more compatible with those enterprises and we understand how to be predictable and scale with them, it helps us actually win new business to be confident that every time we show up for a new enterprise, that we know that everything we're bringing to the table along with Google, like we have confidence that we're gonna be able to maintain the margin that we actually care about. So predictability is super critical. And pricing and predictability, like you gotta have it. Like it's an enterprise requirement. That is the first component, predictability, which I'm assuming is driven through auto scaling for you. How do I think about the other dimensions, particularly as we think about how you're able to save money through additions? Well, that, that's really for us about day-to-day -day management, right? So quota management for us has been hugely, hugely valuable because that really is what drives our customer engagement. So when we think about 
how we manage appropriate margins. And this is really kind of the nitty gritty of the way that our business runs. We need to be able to understand notifications. Uh, we need to be able to understand thresholds and we need to have notifications that are attached to thresholds. We need to be able to do forecasting. And that actually makes our business work in an appropriate way. So to be able to package together all of the elements in additions for us, is actually the most clean way for us to be able to manage our day-to-day -day engagements with our customers. Historically, it's been, I don't wanna call it the wild west, but it's been so much more complicated for us from an operational perspective. So there's a cleanliness to the way that we actually are able to manage our day-to-day -day that it just hasn't been around in the past. So we really appreciate how we're able to manage our day-to-day. -day. It kind of relates to predictability again, but this is really about the features that are available now that are in the packages. So the combination of additions give you the simplification. You can mix and match depending on your on your workloads, of course. And then you have this predictable and reliable workload uh, managed through uh, intelligence, really auto scaling and, and a very precise way of doing it. Now, if you look at the picture before and the picture after, I know we shared some numbers in the opening here. Tell us more about the results on performance and, and cost savings. Yeah, so so let's talk about kind of what has been enabled inside of our organization. So a couple of things have happened. Like when you have predictability as a base and when you've got kind of capabilities that let the day-to-day -day work in a way that is much more manageable, I, I think that something happens inside of your organization from a product perspective that gets pretty exciting. I'm going to call it innovation, right? But like the pipeline starts to open up a bit. And for us, that's actually super tangible. So really specifically, and, and Bruno, I think you've probably seen some of this, we've actually been launching a lot of new product lately. And we've been able to do that in concert with BigQuery. So I get that BigQuery is much bigger than us as a company, Lytx. However, the kind of integrated ecosystem and the clarity around additions and the capabilities that are packaged together allow for us to be really forward thinking and bringing solutions to market like we actually just introduced a clean room solution that is complementary to BigQuery's clean room that works cooperatively with Analytics Hub. And these are really important kind of attributes of consistent, predictable packaging and consistent day-to-day -day kind of management capabilities. So, you know, that's one piece. I think it's super important because as you're thinking about it from a business perspective, operationally, like that's a tangible, intangible value. Like you can increase your innovation pipeline. But in addition to that, operationally, like we've seen the use of thresholds, quotas, like notifications, kind of cost options, right? Even our regional options have like a, a legitimate, concrete impact on our ability of our teams to manage our clients' use of projects and the data sets that they have that are attached to it. So like hyper, hyper tactical, and, and maybe that's what this audience really wants to hear, but hyper tactical. We now get advanced notifications of impending cost threshold overages, like before they happen. So predictive thresholds, honestly, is one of our favorite operational features that is now packaged into additions. And you know, the compression options, the archive options also provide us with flexibility to support our clients because of the types of data stores that we're actually allowing for them or building for them. So we see like this as a potential significant cost savings into the future, but I'm going to talk about exactly what we're seeing out of the gate. That's one area. So we hit product innovation, talked about a kind of operational cost savings and some specific features, but there, there are some other aspects of kind of what's happened that I also think are pretty interesting that I want to call out. There are some flexible permissionings that are packaged together now. We've been able to optimize the processes that I think are needed to give clients access to projects. These are our clients, the enterprise uh, clients in particular, at the data set, the table, and even the row and column level. They give our clients kind of comfort and confidence to know that the right permissionings are in place for important and private data to have the right kind of access points. So you've got like like a lot of huge value that's being created inside of our organization where you've got kind of an increased pipeline and product innovation. You've got operational capabilities that are actually showing up at our bottom line. And you've got, call it a very tangible increase in kind of sophistication for privacy and security that's showing up for their customers. The punchline for us, though, is that we've seen an operational improvement in our performance in our instances and with our customers that's around a 15% improvement in performance increases. That's a pretty big number for us as a business at the scale that we're operating at. In addition to that, I think this is really critical for us. My CFO loves this. I love this as the president of the company. We see a 20% decrease in the cost that we attribute to additions and auto scaling in particular. So we're, we're in a happy spot right now. And we really like the fact that we get to be in this ecosystem and have a, a collaborative approach with the team versus uh, it's being kind of monolithically thrown at us. So Joshua, all of this is great, but give me the specifics. 
how have these innovations changed the way you operationalize and drive value for your customers in the end? You know, Bruno, we're, we're, we are a small team and we support massive multinational organizations. Like our focus has to be on delivering kind of the best in class experience to our customers. So for us, the value is that we can allow for auto scaling to actually help us manage the cost structure on the back end and not worry about that in the way that we've had to in the past. That allows for us to spend our energy in the area that honestly is lifeblood of the business. And that is the engagement with our customers and the operational efficiencies, right? 15% increase in performance, 20% savings in costs. Those are important. Our ability to scale as a business is a combination of those metrics and the ability for us to continue to be more effective and efficient as an organization. And the packaging, along with these new capabilities around auto scaling, are allowing for that to happen for us as a company. We see the path now. If I'm a customer listening to you right now, what is the do's and don'ts? Like, what, what is what I should do and what is the thing that I should absolutely not do? Yeah, well, let me start with some don'ts. So here, the packaging for me, and I think for our team, has really allowed for operations to be much more aligned with the way that our business works. And that's the takeaway, I think, for every listener here. It's that you don't have to kind of adjust the way that the product is built and the feature capabilities to your business. The packaging actually fits to the way that you need to scale. So my don'ts, let's start with the kind of the best practices of what not to do. That's the my negative framing. And then we'll start about the best practices. Like these are really about the operations that are now the things that you should know because of the capabilities that are now available as a part of all of the packaging and some of these new capabilities. So let's start there first. One, uh, I, we work in the data space. Like compliance is the the bare requirement. I don't get to knock on anybody's door and talk to them unless I have confidence that security compliance are a part of what I'm bringing to the table. And operationally, data governance and permissions are an absolute requirement. So here's the thing that we have taken away, especially as we've had all of these new capabilities kind of packaged together around additions in particular. So one, make sure you do this, right? Worst practices, don't do this. Make sure you do this. You have to have a well thought out plan to do all of your validations and all of your follow-ups related to data governance and permissioning up front. I mean, like the, like the literally the worst thing you can probably do out of the gate is disregard or omit governance and planning. And I think historically we kind of thought about it as an after effect because we kind of had to munge together all of the permissioning and the IAM features because everything was mixed together inside of this big package of BigQuery. But now that things are a lot more clear, I think you can start out of the gate and say, all right, first things first, let's set up our data governance and permissioning, like right out of the gate, right? ML model uh, metadata that has to be managed. It's got to be managed effectively. The model view should be reviewed and planned and confirmed. Like make sure that there are two administrators. Always like these are the things that honestly, as an operational team, like we had to think about, but it was always after the fact. And now, because a lot of the semantics are set up from the packaging perspective, when we deploy a big query instance, it's kind of all taken care of and we can now focus on the operational pieces. So that's kind of like a best practice, but it's also like a, you have to do this, like don't not do it because we, like we've learned the hard way. Well, thank you so much for the insights today, Joshua. I could spend hours talking with you. Where can people find out more about your company? Appreciate you having me on. I also could spend hours with you. Uh, if you're interested in learning about Lytix, you can go to lytics.com, L-Y-T-I-C-S.com. Or if you're a current Google customer, find us on the Google Marketplace. Excellent. We're going to put that URL down here as well. Thank you so much for the time. We'll see you soon.